So, hello. Um, thank you for having me. I feel like um, I'm like a ninja getting into this room somehow because the project I'm about to show you has got a tiny, tiny budget. Um, it's a very simple project using ex existing social media networks. So quite something quite different from um, the kind of size and scale of the projects that the previous two speakers have been talking about. Um, but I thought I'd better start with a little bit more about um, where I'm coming from and the institute that I work for, because I'm not sure if everyone in this room has heard of us. Um, we're very, well, I think we're very unusual, but then probably, a, if anywhere, this is probably where I'll find someone that has a similar kind of institute to me. Um, the Institute of Art is an independent college, part of the University of London. We specialise in the history of art. It's actually the only subject that we teach at undergraduate level, um, but we have um, history of dress and conservation at postgraduate level as well. Um, we are kind of known as um, the leaders in that, we are the leaders in that field in the UK, but um, we kind of, a lot of our alumni go on to be the director of the British Museum and very, various places. So we're kind of one of the top places to come and study history of art. But we also have an uh, art gallery on site that has um, some really famous pieces of artwork. Um, and we really specialise in impressionist and post-impressionist work. Um, and one of the reasons that my job is really unusual is because most places have separate learning programs for their university and then a separate learning program for their art gallery or you're just working for a university <laughs> or just an art gallery so my job really is to bring that together um, in the learning program and the learning program's not huge, but it's quite large. We span across lots of different groups of audiences. Um, my specialism is with young people and particularly at Key Stage 3 and above because of that idea of it fitting in with the widening participation for the university. Um, we have a, a really generous fund by the Oak Foundation and that really helps us reach the, the type of audiences that we want to engage in, in our gallery, but also attract to the university. So they, if anyone works for a university out there, you might know the kind of whining participation um, targets. And we work with schools with over 30% free school meals or with um, young people whose parents haven't been to higher education before. So um, the, we're working with quite a slim proportion of young people out there. We're quite picky. Um, and these are my lovely onions. And you can see there the way that we work. And the project I'm going to talk to you about today is um, in the outreach and WP area there. And really, all our projects are to bring art history in to, to everyone possible. So this competition um, was a way of working with students outside of London because a lot of our work is working with our local boroughs and across especially East London. Um, but it's also about reaching new young people and uh, new schools that haven't engaged in our programme before. So those were our two main aims. And this is the project. The project's called Click, Connect, Construct. Um, and it's using something called Pinterest. So if any of you are planning a wedding, I'm sure you've got a Pinterest board. Um, but it's something existing in social media that um, basically really kind of chimed with the way that we, we were working. And we asked students to pick an image from our collection. I have to admit the image that you're looking at now has no, none of our collection in it, but I will show you some later that do. And to find links across time, across um, disciplines, and um, to create a, basically a visual essay um, explaining about the one image that they picked. So really, an image from our collection was a starting point on which the students independently went on a journey of research to come up with a visual essay. Um, and that really was thematic. And I'll talk a little bit about why later, but for now I just want to show you um, explain a little bit about what they did. Um, and this is one of the student's boards, and um, this one actually won a prize for the kind of most visual impact. 
as you can see, the blue, the theme was blue and it really works. Um, so the project was all around using Pinterest and in 2013, we tested this with one of our partner co FE colleges, B6 in um, Hackney. And then the following year, 14 to 15, we decided to roll it out as a competition. So the competition looked a little bit like this. Um, there are the timescales. We had CPD for teachers um, to enable them to start thinking about using Pinterest in their teaching. And um, we also supported it through school workshops for our target schools. So again, they're the schools with over 30% three school meals. Um, but it was an open competition. We decided that although we would su support our target schools, we wanted it to be open to everyone, no matter what um, type of school that you go to. The aims of the project really were to develop four main things for the students, and that was their visual literacy, their research, their knowledge and their confidence. Um, I won't kind of talk you through all the different elements of that, but they're the kind of four main things that we were thinking about. And um, kind of similar to the Magna Carta in that we wanted to enable young people to develop their own research skills um, and not just to teach them things. Um, but why Pinterest? We're an art history university. Um, we're kind of leading in our field. Um, but why, why does Pinterest interest us and why is it a good way of working? Well, it's a little bit to do with this guy. I'm not sure if anyone recognises this. Um, this, these, this here is the Warburg Institute. And um, A.B. Warburg was a 20th century art historian who was working in Hamburg. And in 1927, he created, started creating these things which are called um, atlases or I call them boards. And they're basically um, a collection of images that he'd spent his whole life collecting. And these images were really varied. They were all sorts of visual sources. They might be artworks, um, architecture, stained glass. You can see all the examples in here. And for us, um, what we often try and do is take what's happening in the university, all the research, and share, share that with young people. So at the core of all our learning activities is enabling young people um, and communities to learn how to research. So A.B. Warburg's atlases were one way of, um, one methodology of art historical research. And that's really um, image-based and source-based. And we were really lucky enough to find um, this was this is gold dust. It's one of those moments where you find, I found this image on the, your left from uh, our painting by Eworth here, um, a 16th century painting in, a, in one of Warburg's sports. So that was absolutely brilliant. And I should say that um, Samuel Courtauld, who was our founder at the Courtauld, he actually helped bring um, the Warburg Institute across to London in 1933. So there was that link as well. Um, but really it was about this visual way of working and how we can translate it to research, art historical research today. So Google Images. When you look for an image, I'm sure if you work with young people, you know that the first place that they go is Google Images. And it's probably the first place that you go as well. But as I'm sure lots of you have amazing resources online, this is slightly infuriating. Um, in, because you find a lot of stuff that actually you don't want and actually is a bit useless to the young people. So I was looking for Gauguin's The Dream. The actual correct image is the one on the bottom. And this is one, an image from our collection. And the top three are images that are found through a Google Images search. Um, I won't go into vast detail, but you can really see the difference and the importance of going to the primary source, going to a gallery um, or museum or archives online database and finding images that way. So if um, a young person taking part in this project kind of left learning only one thing, and that was to go to these websites, then for me that was a success for this project. And it was really a way of us sharing the fact that we had 
um, an online catalogue, which a lot of people didn't know, a lot of schools didn't know, and a lot of teachers didn't know. Um, and that's a little bit to do with the fact it's called something completely different. It's an entirely different website, which is a problem. Um, but you can see the importance of finding the correct image. On the right-hand side, the baby in the left-hand corner, the bottom left of the image, is actually completely blanked out by the um, colour, by the shadow. So the whole story of the fact that this is probably a young mother is obliterated from the image. And on the middle image, you can see that there's cropping as well, taking away some of that detail of what's on the back of the wall. So there are all these small things that, um, to young people, they're like, great, found it on Google Images, got the image, it's really quick. But for us, um, really, it was about the importance of the getting the correct image and what you can learn from that image. So I wanted to take the chance to show you the young people's work. Um, this was a pilot project. It was a competition. 120 young people took part. And out of that 120, we shortlisted 12 who we invited um, to the Institute for the day. They got to go to our prints and drawings room with our assistant curator there and spend time with um, primary sources. And they got to spend time in the gallery with our curators. So it, the, there were no grand prizes of vast amounts of money or tokens. It was more about an experience as a prize for those young people. Um, and they did come across uh, from across the UK. Um, I'm actually going to kind of t not talk you through these, but kind of just gently take you through these and not really say much. Um, this project is very visual, but what I would like to kind of point out, um, starting with this one, is the importance of referencing which is not taught a lot in schools, but we all know that as you progress to higher education, it's really important. So because this project was aimed at 16 to 19 year olds, it was a way of teaching them to start thinking about referencing, in particular, how to reference an image, which is something that if you go on to do a history or history of art degree is really, really important. Probably other degrees as well, I wouldn't know that. Um, it also gave them a chance to think about explaining why they're including an image. So really, it's about taking a source, explaining how that um, adds to your argument or shows a, um, a different perspective on your argument. And um, what's really clever about Pinterest and really works is if you look to the bottom of the pin, there is um, pinned from, and it shows you where they're pinning the image from. So if I'll just take you to the next one. You can see on this image, you've got pins from MoMA, Tate. You've got a few from Google, which is naughty. Um, but, the, but the fact that we can track where the students are going to find their information is a really useful tool in Pinterest. Um, and something that the teachers found really useful as well. Um, but really, it was a, ch a chance for them to articulate their ideas about um, a particular theme. So every board had a theme that started with an image from our collection and then again, as I said, moved across time and across disciplines and different visual sources. Um, hopefully you can tell what this theme is. <laughs> we'll flick through them. So we've got movement. I'm actually, this was about um, the other. I'm, I'm not gonna talk about everyone, but I will just kind of go through these. And the great thing about Pinterest is you can also include videos as well, um, but, but you, are, um, you only have a certain word count, so that kind of restriction is, is really, really good um, and lends itself to young people that are perhaps more confident in visuals but not in the written. Um, and another kind of thing that this allowed us to do was to take our collection and allow young people to explore how that works outside of our collection. So in some ways, uh, it, it wasn't entirely selfish, I guess. We were hoping that young people would engage with other collections and draw that all in. Um, obviously, the starting point <laughs> was our collection, but because our mission is art history for all, um, that art history allows us to move beyond just what we have at, in the gallery. Um, just, I just want to briefly share with you a bit of our evaluation. Um, 
and what worked well and perhaps what, what didn't work so well and how we're going to take that forwards. As I said earlier, the kind of four key p points for us were to develop vi visual literacy, research, knowledge and confidence. Um, and so obviously when um, creating the evaluation framework for this, I was looking to find out a bit about how um, the students and the teachers felt the project helped with those four things. For, the, for this point, really, I was surprised um, that they all picked up on this idea of the visual. Um, and I really think because Pinterest is so image-based, it allowed students to start thinking about visual literacy. So in art history, it's a lot about um, image comparisons um, and your kind of analytical skills when looking. So this was really, um, Pinterest allowed us to put that right at the front of what um, they were learning rather than writing an essay and it kind of being an additional thing on the side. Um, the research skills went really well. Um, the idea of cross-referencing in, in the bottom quote I found really interesting um, because really it's about, we wanted the students to start thinking about um, whether the type of information, where they were getting it from, whether it's trusted or not trusted. So often, like a Google search might find you lots of information quickly, but that information not, might not be very um, trustworthy because it might just be a blog of someone who doesn't know, isn't an expert in their field. So we were really tr um, encouraging them to go to the right sources to find information. And um, while this is kind of a digital project, we encourage them as much as possible to go to books and to go to primary sources. So in some ways it was combining um, a digital way of working with traditional means of researching and really embedding those traditional research skills within and then presenting it in a digital way. Um, and the fact that it worked across other subjects um, was really good as well. So we are, um, I understand that art history is a very specialist field. Um, we, we often have a battle with um, trying to show that we're kind of important on it. But I think really it's about um, interdisciplinary working. This works across the humanities. Um, and, and we're really happy to see that that was kind of fed back as well. Um, what I really liked about this project was that um, each young person became a specialist in their field. So much like um, doing a PhD, they had a very small research field that they then became experts. And lots of the teachers um, talked, um, got them to present their work to each other, which allowed them to kind of have this uh, research community and be able to comment on each other. Um, each other's work and I, I thought that was really interesting um, and I quite like the way that the teacher talks about liberating them from their A-level um, syllabus because really this is about having a p piece of independent research and it might work well sitting ne alongside the curriculum but wasn't specifically focused at working with the curriculum. And then most importantly, it gave them a confidence to come in, into our collection. They had this spe specialist knowledge. They had, um, we'd given them a tool to be able to articulate their ideas and they kind of felt, felt full of confidence coming into the gallery. Um, so much so that we, um, when I took them to the prints and drawings room, we pulled out some of the um, prints and drawings that they had included in their Pinterest boards and they were able to quite quickly correct our assistant curator on bits and bobs. So that was really nice, the kind of confidence of a 17-year-old to walk into an institute and say, actually, um, you're wrong to someone who's done a PhD is pretty impressive, I think. Um, but I'll just finish very briefly with um, lessons that we've learned because really the main thing is that the, about the competition structure and for us, it felt like it was quite time intensive. Um, we weren't sure if it was completely um, working towards our aims of art history for all. We found the shortlisting process quite difficult um, and would, would like to kind of think a bit more about whether the competition structure actually discourages engagement with the collection later on for the young people that didn't get shortlisted. Um, there was also a lot more applications from young people living in London um, than outside of London. So that idea of just putting something digital and then it being able to reach everyone I do, is, is not really 
the case, I think. And we felt and we really did have to work with schools um, and all the schools that took part were schools that had been to the CPD or taken part in a workshop or visited the gallery. So there was that, still that sense of, um, I, so I call it real, but um, kind of the reality of coming into the gallery or us going out to a school, there was, that was still needed. So even creating a digital project alone didn't allow us to suddenly be reaching loads of new audiences. So something that's what we're kind of thinking about at the moment, and we're leaning towards embedding um, this way of researching and working into lots of uh, across our program rather than specifically having this digital learning um, pr di um, competition but this is something I've been thinking about um, and would really appreciate if anyone has been thinking about similar things to kind of have a chat so it's le I'll leave it on the question mark um, yeah